Happy Thursday, everybody. It's time for another exciting lesson with Professor Victor C. Nigo here at Sisseton Wapitan College English Composition One. Are you ready? Let's get started. I'm going to make this video a little bit shorter and a little bit faster than I normally do because my videos are always way too long. And, well, I don't need to torture my students so much. Today, we have this wonderful topic which I already wrote about because I deleted a previous video because I talked too much blah, 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 as usual. <coughs> I even brought our textbook. Our textbook is talking about ethos which is something I mentioned to you before. I gave you a definition that was kind of short. I said well ethos is kind of like the author's uh, ability willingness to pass himself off as an authority on a certain topic and I like this definition better, which comes from our textbook written by Cheryl Glenn, The New Harb Race Guide, Genres for Composing, page 599, a glossary. <coughs> she defines ethos as the ethical appeal of the writer, the writer's credibility, goodwill, and trustworthiness. The ethical appeal of the writer's credibility, goodwill, and trustworthiness. Well, that's a good start. I kind of like a combination of my definition and hers, but she does, on page 23, give a more in-depth uh, de definition. I can't talk today. Ethos, page 23. Writers and speakers can leverage the available means of persuasion in different ways. First off, when you compose your own message for a specific audience, you will also need to keep in mind exactly how you will come across to your audience. Okay, that's what I said. How you can assure them that you have their best interest in mind. And often, this includes establishing common ground with the interests of your audience in order to get that audience to listen. Remember that little triangle exercise I did last time? We put author, reader, issue, and a big triangle. Remember that? And I did, I changed it so I said uh, we can also add ethos, pathos, and logos. Let's put it up here really fast. Pathos. We'll talk about these other ones in green later. Logos. And I put it in the middle purpose. But in this case, we're gonna stay focused on ethos. Let me keep reading from the book just a tiny bit. So, ethos is the ethical appeal of the writer's credibility, goodwill, and trustworthiness. Will the audience find the writer believable? Hmm. Does the speaker or writer establish common ground? a belief or value that provides the basis of agreement? By calibrating the tone of your response, you can also control the attitude you project to your intended audience. That's good enough for us for right now. Now, why am I even bothering you with this? Because we're writing students. And as writing students, we've got an assignment coming up. This is called the how-to paper. I believe this is due Monday, the February something or other, 29th or something like that. I don't remember the, maybe it's the 19th. Have a look, I'm gonna put it up on e-learning and you'll see. And I'll walk you through it in a separate video. Like I said, I'm gonna keep this one kind of short today. So, our how-to paper. This is where you're going to let your authority and your talent shine. Remember what I told you last time. Everyone in here or out there in, in internet land, all of you, each and every one of you has some special talent that you know how to do very well, especially well, whatever it is, as long as you keep it PG-13 or G-rated. 
you're going to identify that talent in this upcoming paper. You'll give a little background of what the talent is, whether it be how to make good fry bread, maybe you know the history of it, or whether it's driving in the snow, could be how to paint pictures of buffalo, whatever it is. Um, identify the talent, provide a little background to that talent, and invite your readership to join you in this talent. Choose something that is interesting, but also something that is doable. Don't make it too complicated because you will drive your readers nuts. Now, as we prepare to do this assignment, let us keep one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points in mind. <coughs> Writing for an audience. Point one, what made you choose this topic in the first place? Number two, for this talent. Number two, how have others influenced your decision? Is it interesting to other people? Number three, who exactly is gonna be your audience? Don't just make it your teacher or your classmates. You never know, this, what you're writing might actually end up being something publishable. You know what I said last time? I think I'm on number four, but I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, yep, four, five, whatever. Next, what do you know about your audience, your chosen audience? Choose an audience that you believe is gonna be interested and then decide what you know about this audience. Next, what exactly do you want your audience to do with this information, this talent, this is, you know, when you invite this person along to join you, what do you want them to do exactly? And of course, how does your own experience contribute to their message? So in your own way, for example, um, when I first learned how to make fry bread from one of my elders, they just showed me the basic fry bread and I said, you know, it might taste a little bit nicer if I add a little Chinese twist to it. So I started adding some Chinese spices to mine. And I even, on another one, the sweeter ones that I make, I decided to put a teeny tiny bit of dry powder con condensed milk to it to add. So whatever it is, if you've got your own little secrets, consider that as something for your special talent. Now, like I said, I don't wanna overdo it today in this little mini lecture. Let me see how much time I've already gobbled up talking. Wow, seven minutes and 51 seconds. So, like I said, we'll keep it short and sweet this time around. Thank you so much for being so patient with me. And keep your eyes peeled on e-learning for the next episode. Talk to you later. Bye!